Yes, sir. Well, we often hear about the ministry of 144,000 being witnesses and preachers in the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us where we get that from and what the ministry is in the tribulation? All right, uh, Revelation chapter 7, and Revelation chapter 7, one of the main reasons why we connect the uh, ministry of the 144,000 with Jewish evangelism in the tribulation is because the immediate context of Revelation 7, 9, after telling you the 144,000 Jews are saved, 12,000 out of every tribe, then you're told this in Revelation 7, verse 9. Revelation 7, 9, After this I beheld and know a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palm in their hands. So there's a multitude of Gentiles saved after that bunch is saved, and when they're asked where they came from, you're told in verse 14 they came out of the Great Tribulation. So first 144,000 Jews are mentioned, and then immediately all these saved Gentiles and the Tribulation. So we connect them with the Israelites. Now that's perfectly legitimate because of what you just read in Romans chapter 11, where Gentile salvation is connected with Israel. It's also perfectly legitimate because our salvation as Christians, as individuals, is, now therefore you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Gentiles get their salvation through Israel. The way in this age, Israel gets his salvation through a Gentile. I've heard Hyman Appleman and uh, David Ben Lou say, or Ben David Lou, whatever his name is, I've heard him say that any Jew saved in this, in this age is saved through his contact with a Gentile. Not all the Jews that ever known, that ever led to Christ, there was a Gentile involved in the Jewish salvation. Now, if that's true in the tribulation, the Jew's going to have to help the Gentile out. Now, there's another good reason for it, and that is there's three characters in the Bible that were Jews, and those three characters are called a witness to Gentiles. And all three of those characters picture something in the tribulation. The first of those is Jeremiah. Take your Bible and turn to Jeremiah, and, and notice Jeremiah's commission is not just to the Jews. Jeremiah chapter 1. And if ever you had a picture of a tribulation witness, Jeremiah is the tribulation witness. Jeremiah chapter 1. First of all, get a Jeremiah chapter 1, and then Jeremiah chapter 25. Jeremiah chapter 1, here's the commission. Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and ordained thee a prophet to the what? Nations. Verse 10. See, I have set this day over the nations and over the kingdoms. Plural. Oh, I come to Jeremiah 25, and here they are. So Jeremiah is commissioned to preach to Gentile nations, and he's a Jew. Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah chapter 25, and here's his... Oh, his commission. Uh, Jeremiah twenty five fifteen. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel to me, Take the wine cup of this spirit in my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink of it, so forth and so on. Uh, verse uh, 26. All the kings of the north far and near with one another, and all the kings of the world which are upon the face of the earth. Now Jeremiah, the word Jeremiah means cast out. And the term Jeremiah, the term cast out, occurs in the book of Jeremiah 13 times. The book of Jeremiah has 52 chapters. That's a full deck. That's four times 13. And Jeremiah, the only man in the Bible, told not to get married or have children. And Christ said the tribulation, Woe be to them that give suck in those days. And Jeremiah was up against the, one of the greatest types of Antichrist in the Bible, Nebuchadnezzar. So Jeremiah is plainly a picture of a tribulation prophet. And he is commissioned it to Gentiles. Or oh, there's another one like it. And come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and that's the Apostle Paul. You don't often think about it being a type of tribulation preacher. But when he talks about his birth, he mentions his birth as being out of place at the wrong time. 1 Corinthians 4, or 15 rather, 1 Corinthians 15. That one there in chapter 4 was on your birth. 1 Corinthians 15 1 Corinthians 15, verse 7. 
After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. And it's not being born when he was ready, due time, but born out of due time, at the wrong time, ahead of time. And Paul likened his birth there to something unusual that's out of place. And Paul is born again when he sees Jesus Christ from heaven like the sun, and he's immediately told, you'll be a witness to me, to the Gentiles. Now he goes to the Gentiles. He doesn't get married like Jeremiah. He doesn't have children like Jeremiah. And he witnesses to the Gentiles. So Paul's a type. Now there's one other type. And that type is Jonah. And Jonah back in the Old Testament is told to cry against Nineveh, that great city, the preaching I bid thee, and cry against it. That Nineveh is an Assyrian city. You study your Bible, you'll find the greatest type of Antichrist in the Bible, even greater than Nebuchadnezzar, is the king of Assyria. Matter of fact, he's, he located in Isaiah 10, 10. That Pharaoh that persecuted the children of Israel was an Assyrian. He wasn't an Egyptian. He was an Assyrian. And he's called the Assyrian in Isaiah 10, 10, and he's called a dragon in Isaiah chapter 50. And that's the king of Nineveh. And Jonah goes preaches in Nineveh. So Jonah and Jeremiah and Paul are pictures of Jews called to preach to Gentiles. And they all, all single, none of them get married, all of them preach to Gentiles. And that because of that, you can, you can, you can't say for sure. But because of that, you can say the 144,000 are Jewish evangelists called to preach to Gentile nations. There's one other reason. There are 12,000 from each tribe, right? All right, come to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Nothing like a King James Bible to clean up a seminary. Isaiah chapter 32. Isaiah 32, 7. There are plenty in this book. There are plenty in this book. Isaiah 32, verse 7. I told your pastor this morning eating breakfast, I said, I've given up trying to master the Bible. I gave it up. About 20 times ago, about the 91st time I went through there, I said, that's it. I've had enough, man. I'm, my notes are getting all screwed up. I don't know where I'm at. My notes, my notes are crossing each other. And I'm getting lost in my own notes, man. I still read it and study it, but I've given up ever trying to master it. It can't be mastered. You can't master it in your own language. There's nuts worrying about Hebrew and Greek. You can't even get it in English. What about the Hebrew and the Greek? Deuteronomy 32:7. Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the nation of their inheritance, watch it. When the Most High divided, when he separated, that's the Lord, division and separation. When the Most High divided to the nations, there you go. When he separated the sons of Adam, the Gentiles, he set the bounds of the people. Gentile nations, according to the number of the children of Israel. There are 12 tribes. Then there has to be 12 nations. You've got one Jew evangelizing each nation, one tribe evangelizing each nation. It means those nations match those tribes. And like I said a uh, time before, there's a key in here that nobody's ever worked out yet. And I've worked at it off and on for maybe 12, 15 years. And I haven't got it. And maybe the reason why you can't get it is because if you got it, you'd have a glorified Ouija board worked out and just be too much to get a hold of. But you know what you got in that book? I mean, what a book. <laughs> there are nine million books in the Library of Congress, and all nine million of those books combined can't give you the information that's in this book. Amen. Nine million combined. You know what you got here? You got 12 months in a year. And you got 12 tribes to match those months. And there's a birthstone, 12 birthstones for each one of them months. So you got 12 tribes and 12 stone, 12 months. For the tree of life has 12 manner of fruits every month for the healing of the nations. So you got 12 fruits and 12 tribes and 12 nations and 12 months and 12 stones sitting there. But then you got 12 constellations up over your head. Well, you have the new earth. And you got 12 apostles sitting there. You, then you got 12 colors. You run that around that wheel and that thing comes out yellow, 
yellow, orange, 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 red, 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 purple, 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 blue, 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 green, green, greenish, yellow, yellow. Twelve of them. The twelve colors. You start that musical scale. A, B flat, B, C, D flat, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, A flat, twelve notes. Now you get that thing going, before you get through that thing, you're going to have twelve sets of twelve sitting there that God made, and that things are going to match. They're going to match if a guy could ever work them out. And if he ever worked them out, you know what you'd find? You'd find somewhere on this earth, you see, that's where it is. In every, in every lie, there's always an element of truth. And when Garner Ted Armstrong starts this stuff about the English-speaking people are Ephraim and Manasseh, then that dumb moron, mor I was going to say moron, Mormon, Mormon <laughs> comes into your house and tells you that uh, they're from the tribe of Ephraim. See? There's always a base of truth in a thing like that. But nobody has yet located the truth. And when you get that thing down, as sure as you live and breathe, the United States, England, Russia, China, Japan, Germany are in that book. They're in there. But they're disguised. Don't tell me, especially a country like Germany, don't tell me Germany isn't in the book. Germany killed more Jews than Pharaoh did. God has always been interested in the people who are connected with his people. Here's one Protestant German, Martin Luther, gives the whole world the Reformation, and the Catholic German, Adolf Hitler, kills 22 million people. And they're not in this book. They're in this book. But nobody's ever found it. So the last reason we're assuming that is the number matches the number of nations, so they're probably prophets to nations. And, uh, of course, Jonah is the, Jonah is the, uh, that's the, that's the weirdest character in the whole Bible. Did you ever study that character? You talk about a character getting mad at God. Doest thou well to be angry? I do well to be angry even to death. That's how he talks to God. I mean, Lord, kill men for less than that. Onan, you know, displeased the Lord, and the Lord killed him. The other fellow was evil, and the Lord killed him. And the Lord said to Jonah, are you mad? You bet your life I'm mad. You got a right to be mad? You bet your right I got a right to be mad. You sure about to go and kill me? I'll stay mad. <laughs> Something, man. <laughs> And when a guy gets talking to God like that, the Lord says, now look at here, what about this gourd here? You worried about this gourd here, you know, and upset about that because it took care of you? And I got 120,000 people down there that aren't old enough to count yet. Shouldn't I spare them? And that's how the book ends. It ends with a question mark. Strangest book in the Bible. Thing ends with a question mark on it. That old boy, you mad? I'm mad at the death. Well, look, shouldn't I help them folks out there? <laughs> that's how the book ends. Jonah is a type of a, a type of tribulation preacher. All right, brother, let's take, better take a break now, about five minutes, seven. Nothing like a Bible to clear up a college education.